This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Recently, I purchased and then reviewed the TrueNet Circular Sock Machine, which I highly recommend. I also filmed six quick start videos on the TrueNet, linked in the description below to teach the most basic skills. This last video is my introduction to the river. I'm filming this so you can see me make a knit one, purl one cuff, and knit three, purl one ribbing, and the selvage, which is how you cast on, as I work this sock from the True Knit Manual. There are so many ways that you can use this river, but I'm going to send you to the True Knits videos for more information since this completes my quick start series. I hope you'll take advantage of those excellent resources and learn other selvages, ribbon combinations, and even ribbed insteps. See the description for those links. I have knitted on seven sock machines before this one, mostly antique, over a number of years. My favorite sock has been a ribbed instep sock, that I made on my antique machine with a hand-sewn selvage. So here's how that hand-sewn selvage looks. I teach that sock in my book and video set, The Happy Cranker. The reason that I did the hand-sewn selvage, which takes extra time, is that it makes a beautiful stretchy edge. My antique ribber, which is old and worn, can't handle the extra yarn in an automatic selvage. The new True Knit machine gives you several selvage options and I'm going to knit this one here. Here's another True Knit selvage and I think you'll feel like these are perfectly good selvages and they do save you a lot of time over hand sewing a selvage. That hand sewn selvage is an option for those of you who are working on antique machines. I'm going to do the True Knit Ribbed Leg Sock. I showed you this sock earlier. It has the Knit 1 Pearl 1 cuff and then it has the Knit 3 Pearl 1 leg. I made it in the men's size. It's pretty big. So I'm going to make it smaller so it fits me. To make a ribbed sock, I start a little bit differently. I need to take out every other needle and the way I like to do it is pull them up and those are the ones I'm going to take out. So I'm going to circle around the ones. The first needle I take out is number two. So their pink mark is there and number two is the second one beyond the pink mark. And I just pull up every other needle as far around as I can. When you use the ribber, you're going to be using both kinds of needles, the long and the short needles. The cylinder needles are the long ones. And I can only go to about here, and then the needles go down into the cylinder. They're set up to knit again. I've got my box of the cylinder needles, because I want to put these right in the box and not drop them on the floor. I'll put the box handy and you do kind of a funny thing. There is a little bracket that will hold your cylinder spring out but it's real easy to just tip these over and then you can lift them out really fast even several at a time. And I like to put them straight in the box so that I don't have to crawl around on the floor and pick any up. So that only takes a few seconds, but I still need to crank around because I've got some on this side that I didn't pick up. And as I do this, I like to just give this a quick look and make sure that I'm really picking out every other needle so I'm getting the right ones.
had a lot of closed latches. And that one. And that one. So I know I have the right ones, and I'm going to tip those down. And I'm just going to lift them out quickly. And then as soon as I put them in the box, because of my incredible talent for spilling needles, I close the box and set it aside. You've seen me hang the bonnet before, and since I have every other needle, I'm just going to put a loop from the bonnet on all of the needles that are in the machine just now. So I'll do that and be right back. My machine is threaded with some bright red waste yarn, which is a really good contrast to my sock yarn. I've chosen some skeined neutral colored sock yarn with some beautiful denim blues and soft browns and beiges. So threading the waste yarn, just like that. I have to hold the bonnet down and knit a few. Then I can put this yarn in the middle. I need them all to pop up so I can get the rest of them in the bonnet loops. I'm also making sure that my latches are open. I'll hang the weights and be right back. After knitting some waist yarn, I have a fabric that's very spider webby and loose. And now I am going to stop at D. I'm going to go until needle number one starts to go down a little bit. And I'm going to bring this yarn to the inside. I'll just grab the hook and pull it inside the cylinder. Now I'm threading the sock yarn into the feeder, but I am also going to make sure that it goes in this hook. This hook right here in front of the feeder is the number one needle. That way there are actually both yarns going in that hook. Now I'm going to knit three quarters of a round ending at C. Then I'm going to put the ribber on. If I tilt my camera forward you can see that here's the large hole and here are the two small holes. The post of the ribber goes in that large hole and the two small posts go in the small ones. Since this is a new machine, the ribber is rather stiff, but it slips down into place easily. Before I can begin to do ribbing, I have to do an inspection. First, I need the ribber to be all the way down. When it's all the way down, there's no gap here. The shell of the sock machine ends here, and then this is the ribber assembly, so no gap there. The next thing is that the cylinder dial needs to be rotated counterclockwise until it taps, and you can feel it. It will tap the vein inside that holds it in place, and then this part, this is the ribber cam, it needs to be rotated clockwise until the screw here taps the drive pin. So that taps there, this taps here, and then the ribber is positioned properly for needle installation. See how small the ribber needles are compared to my index finger? This one has an open latch and the hook is easily seen. This one has a closed latch. 
you need to install your ribbon needles with an open latch. I have moved the camera so that we are looking right at the pink dot on the center right side, that's position D of the sock machine, and we're going to install a ribber needle. I'm going to take an open ribber needle and poke it in in that first space after needle number one, and I've got blue sock yarn in there that I have hooked, and then I'm just going to put it in the slot with the small opening. Please observe that the yarn for the ribber needles, that is the light blue, it started right here on needle one, so I have light blue yarn for that. The yarn here is still the waste yarn, and we don't want to pick up the waste yarn. So I'm going to proceed to grab the little piece of yarn between the next two cylinder needles with a ribber needle. I get it on an open hook and I slide it into place. Now there are a couple of other ways to do that. One of them is to put an open ribber needle in the next slot. Notice I'm using every other slot using the ones with the short area. That's my marking to help me use the right one. But one of the things that people can do is they can pick up this blue yarn with this tool and hang it on there. And for me, I'm happier hooking the yarn and putting it on, but you do what you like to do. So that's an option. Another way, if you're really feeling all thumbs about getting that yarn, is you can pull a needle out a little bit. As I pull that needle out, you see that blue yarn and you can grab it and put it in. But I have found what works best for me is to just fish the yarn up and after a little practice it's not a problem at all. I want to get all the blue yarn not the red yarn and I don't want to split the blue yarn. I don't want to get one strand and not get the rest. So I've done a few and I think it's fairly obvious that for me to keep doing this, I have to crank around. So I crank a little ways, and then I can do a few more. So I go more toward the back of the machine and get my next one. Pick it up and put it in its slot. I will put these in their slots and be back. I just have to crank a little every so often so I can get to a few more and put them in. Since I'm such a needle dropper, I'm going to go ahead and close my ribber needle box. After the ribber needles are installed, as I finish that round, I want to watch this last needle I put in. It's the needle before the pink dot. When that needle sticks out, oop, there he goes, I loosen this knob. Now I'm going to have to do two things at once, something with each hand. I'm going to have to get the yarn carrier moving with one hand while I gently slide this out with the other hand. So I'm moving and I'm sliding out and after I've gone about a quarter of a turn I'll tighten that. Now I need two rounds like this. Set this way it will knit cylinder needles only. That's one round. Now that's almost two rounds, but I need to stop in a certain place. The T on the word O-U-T, I'm going to line up with that needle. Ah, it's pretty close. Now I'm going to loosen this. I have to do two things at once. I have to slide this while I have the yarn carrier moving. So I start to move and then I gently slide and keep moving. And after I've knitted a little while, 
then I tighten it. And that will just rib beautifully. I have found that if I just stop, loosen, move, and then try to go, it will jam. But if I stop, loosen, move, and slide as I'm moving, it goes every time. So practice that a bit, and that will really help you make a nice salvage. My pattern wants me to stop at C, so I still see 14 on my row counter, but I'm stopping here because when I get to that pink mark, I'll be at 15. And they want me to reset my row counter so I can do the leg. Now, the interesting thing about the leg is that we are going to put cylinder needles back in so that instead of doing knit one, purl one ribbing, we can do knit three purl one ribbing. So I'm going to need my boxes with my, my um, cylinder and my river needles open and handy. My habit is to put the river on my left, the cylinder on my right. No particular reason. I just like having a habit. My little body is trained that this right hand is going to be where to get a cylinder needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace the missing cylinder needles, but just every other time. That way I'll have three cylinder needles and then I'll have one river needle. Here's what I'm doing. I want to have a needle here in my cylinder. So I take a cylinder needle and I put it with the butt down, that's this little part that sticks out, push it in this slot underneath the cylinder spring and then I can stand it up push it down with an open latch. Now I need to get the stitch off this ribber needle, which is lined right up with it, and put it on that needle. So I take my, my thumb, push this out a little bit, and use both hands. I lift it up, and I just lift that stitch right on there and pull that needle out. Want to see it again? So I just did this one. Now I'm going to do that one. I have to skip this one because I want knit three, purl one. So I go there, push my needle behind the spring and push it down, and then I get this ribber needle right here, push it out, pick it up with both hands, and put the loop over the needle. It's not hard. It's actually easier than the Go Fish ribbon needle installation. And I'm going to keep on doing that. Insert a needle, put it in place, open its latch, slip that ribbon needle out, and lift that loop onto the needle. I'm going to keep doing this off camera as I knit because I have to go a little farther to have room to get my hands in there and be able to see. And I'm going to work my way around and I'll probably show you another spot on the other side just in case we can get a better view. So that's my job to go all the way around this round putting those needles in and putting a stitch on each of them. Now this makes this really pretty leg on the sock with this knit three pearl one design. I've come around to the left side and I think you'll be able to see a little better over here. So here I am putting the needle in, pushing it down and opening its latch. And here I am pulling out that little ribber needle and lifting its stitch onto that hook. And I'll do that again. Put the needle in, open the lash, put it down, get the ribber stitch on there. And then I need some more room, so I crank a little farther. One of the beauties 
of knitting with machines is you have the machine to help you get fabulous tension and the machine just does a lot for you to help you succeed. I have already put all of the needles in all the way around and that's giving me my Knit 3 Pearl 1 layout that I want right now and that is just going to be for the leg portion of my pattern. So I'm going to knit 40 rounds and I'm going to stop at C. C is the front of the machine and I have you looking at the machine from the far left. After I do that I am going to change to all knit stitches. There are some patterns where you only change the front stitches so that you can do the heel with the back part and ribbing, but I'm not doing that today. That's a more advanced technique, and I'll let you try that later. Today I'm just giving you an introduction to the ribber. So what I do now is the 40 rounds for the leg. I'll be back when I have the 40 rounds done. I moved the camera. My 40 rounds are done and you are looking at the right side. There's my pink mark and my next instruction is I need to replace whatever cylinder needles I didn't already replace and make everything be a knit stitch. So I put that in just like I did before and I'm bringing out my little ribber needle just like before and I am lifting the stitch onto the cylinder needle like I did before. And I will go all the way around for this round doing this. I'm resetting my row counter because the first round of this will be the first round of the preheel. And when I'm finished, there won't be any ribber needles in work. And I'll be able to take the ribber off the machine here I am putting in the last couple. After this, I'm going to go off camera because everything else that I see in this sock pattern is something I showed in the previous videos. And I don't want this video to go on forever. I hope that you will just play with ribbing, make a bunch of swatches. You will master ribbing and then jump aboard and actually make some ribbed sock. I've just removed my ribber and I can look inside and see the beautiful ribbing that was knitted. So I'm going to move forward and get my pre-heel, my heel, my foot, and my toe done and then come back and we'll look at the finished sock and go over a few things. One of the things I do need to go over is how to finish your selvage on the sock so that it looks as good as possible. The selvage was the special cast on method that we used with ribbing. It not only does an unravel but it stretches and springs which is very important for a ribber cuff. I've just threaded the waist yarn in after finishing the toe and I'm going to take it off I'll remove all the weights, take it off, and show you the sock. Then we need to talk about the selvage a little more. Cranking the sock off. Here's my finished sock. I'm really happy with it. It's pretty soft yarn. I need to remove the bonnet from the waist yarn. I turned my sock inside out. And here's the original end of the yarn the waist yarn. Here's the bonnet. I want to get this waist yarn off this bonnet. So I'm going to clip the yarn over here, being careful not to cut the yellow, of course. Then I'm going to pull on this yarn, and it gathers up, and it gathers up. I can work around it, keep gathering it up, and then it'll all put off, pull off pretty much in one piece unless there was a place where, and there was, where I had to pick up the bonnet late. So there's a little spot where I did that. And I'm just going to snip the waist yarn there. I am not unraveling this waist yarn yet. I'm turning my sock right side out again. 
And now I'm going to take my sock to my steamer. I use a Jiffy steamer. Maybe you use a steam iron. But there's my sock lying on a towel ready for me to hit it with steam. I have lots of steam coming out of my nozzle. I go down here and I steam it like that. I steamed it firmly. Then I flip it over and I steam the other side firmly. Now, I don't normally steam things all that much, but this sock yarn is mostly wool and wool requires more steaming than acrylic. Now I turn my steamer off and I'm just going to unravel this waste yarn. If I get the right end, this will unravel like crazy, but I did snip it, so I might have to pull it in a couple places to find the very end. See, there's a place where I cut. Here we go. So I unravel my waste yarn, and when you get toward, toward the end, don't be surprised that it gathers up. I've got it nearly unraveled, and it started to uh, gather up on me, but here I am getting it all undone. Give that a little clip and open it out. Grab the other end. I probably split the yarn. Whenever you split the yarn, it's just the waste yarn. No big deal, right? Now that yarn is all out of there. I've got one little end to hide, but that is a very nice selvage. All I need to do is hide that end and close my wide open toe. So let's work on that. I'm going down a single row of the V's of the stitches with my yarn. See, I'm just kind of turning in a circle and popping into each one until I've gone quite a ways down. And then I'll pull that down. Neatly. But that's not all. I've come unthreaded. I'm going to go up another column. So I'll turn this around so that it's showing on camera as well as I can. Put my finger under there. I'm going to go up this column. And you might say to yourself, after you go up a column, that, oh, gee, it'll never come out again. But I don't really like the idea that if it did come out again, it would come out near the top where the little end would show. So let's go over here to the next column, and we'll go back down. So I'm turning that around again just to make it easy for myself. And I'll just put my hand under there and I'll go back down one more column. It hardly even shows on the inside. It won't show at all on the outside. I'll trim it close that finishes my selvage, and I hope you can see what a nice, springy, good-looking selvage that is. So all I have to do is close the toe, and I've got my sock. Well, folks, 
I sewed the toe, I tried the sock on, it fits great. I'm a women's medium, by the way, about a size 8 shoe. Here's my cuff with my nice springy selvage. And here is my leg with the Knit 3 Pearl 1 knitting. Pre-heel, heel, foot, and toe. If you like this content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. That really does help me. And I just want to really encourage you to go down in the description box. I have created an amazing list of circular sock machine resources and other information for you. So give that a look. There are some wonderful links down there. Thanks for watching to the very end and happy cranking to you all.